Penumbra Black Plague Game Review. This one starts right where the last one left off. I'm not going to give away what that means. Those who played it will know, and those who haven't shouldn't know. This starts with a very brief summary of the events of the first game, and you don't need to have played the first one to you know, fully understand it. To start with what's new in this one, you can now rotate more, you know, in the first one I pretty much found myself, you know, pushing stuff against a wall to turn it. And this time there's just, you know, there's a key and you press it and then you turn the mouse. It's not perfect. Definitely not. And there are still some times where you really wish it was a bit better. Maybe it would have been good if there had been, like, separate keys for, you know, the different whatchamacallit, angles, I guess. Anyway, you know, X, Y, and Z. We also have a bit more... more voice acting, and it remains absolutely excellent. And it's more the... the uh, there are fewer horrific descriptions in text. More of the horror comes from what you hear and how it's said, and who's saying it, and such. And that's all I'm going to say about that. This is more direct with the, you know, it kind of spells out what the first one hinted at. And it does have a conclusion. It pretty much ends the story. I'm really not sure how Requiem is going to, the expansion pack is going to pick up from here. But anyway, and where the first one more took its time and built up an atmosphere gradually and played very much on primal fears, this one is more direct. It throws you into a Silent Hill-like grotesque alternate reality some, and in general it's just not as subtle. You can still there continues to be this very realistic physics engine with, you know, laws of gravity and such. You can break something if it's light enough to toss and, or drop, and, you know, if it's breakable, like glass or, you know, worn metal, such and such. And it is still very much about, you know, bringing light into these very dark areas, although doing so will attract attention from any enemies nearby. The light sources are again the flashlight, which eats batteries like there's no tomorrow, and the batteries you have to find, and this time you actually have to manually replace them, which I thought was a very nice addition. The glow stick, which really does not spread very much light, only the very immediate area, and the flares that are finite in amount, and again, you have to find them. The enemies are, again, pretty simply designed, although there are some pretty memorable, you know, details to the design. This time, you cannot fight enemies. There are no weapons. You pretty much just have to hide. Sometimes you can flee and occasionally, you know, there's there are other options and that's all I'm going to say about that. The game is again entirely focused on these puzzles and most of them have some kind of grounding in these physical things, you know, so you have to figure something out using logic. There are a couple where you have to just, you know, try out different solutions until you stumble on the correct one. This is again very psychological horror, although the approach is slightly different. It does not play as much on primal fears. It's more the perception and, you know, 
let's just say your mind will play tricks on you in this game. Now, the graphics remain pretty good, although the alternate realities do push it a bit further than they can really handle. And I suppose that's more or less it. It's, again, checkpoint saving, and it saves pretty frequently, so you seldom have to replay very much. There are a couple of portions that are really tough. There's more of a focus on sneaking this time around, I would say. And there are definitely some memorable sequences in this. The two are very clearly separate. This one has some stuff that the first doesn't, and the first, you know, has some stuff that this one doesn't, for better or for worse. I would say that both are well worth playing, although if you only want to do one, then the first one is for people who want the hints and the you know, gradual exploration of a mystery, you know, exploration of primal fears and descriptions being the main source of horror, with some fighting against enemies, although it's tough, and those who want a more direct, you know, a mystery with a conclusion, pretty much, and who want you know, grotesque sights and sounds, who want, you know, more spoken than written in text, then, you know, this one is the one you'd prefer.